Hello and welcome to this uh, special uh, conversation with uh, Yogendra Yadav, uh, National Convener of Bharat Jodo Abhiyan. Uh, but uh, the reason why I am talking to uh, Yogendra Yadav is uh, uh, because he uh, has travelled uh, through uh, parts of large uh, parts of Western UP, Haryana. Uh, now he'll be going to Rajasthan uh, later to into Bihar, Eastern UP, etc. And Yogendra Yadav is uh, uh, bringing a lot of insights uh, from the ground. Uh, now, there's uh, people sitting here uh, uh, in their drawing rooms in, in Delhi or Bombay or, or elsewhere uh, are very anxiously speculating about what's going to happen in 2024. And the, the, the general narrative uh, uh, is that Ayega to Modi hi. Now, that is the, that's the general uh, 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 that the general feeling that has been uh, perception that has been generated uh, by the by the massive media machinery uh, that the ruling party today has, uh, but but Yogendra Yadav uh, from his ground experience uh, is bringing us a different perspective, uh, which he has captured in in a recent article in the print uh, where he he talks about what the people on the ground are feeling uh, and what do they think about the 2024 elections. Uh, welcome to our show Yogendra uh, um, and, I'm, and I'm also, uh, I'm, 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 I'm a bit partial to Yogendra because of my own recent experience when I was in Karnataka to cover the Karnataka elections, uh, Yogendra had, uh, had called out uh, uh, the, the Karnataka election correctly against the, uh, against the current actually. In fact, the extent of victory uh, is something that uh, Yogendra Yadav was one of the very few who had predicted. And subsequently, I was in Telangana to cover Telangana assimilation. There also, Yogendra Yadav had uh, called the elections uh, right. Uh, he got the, the sense of the ground very accurately. And in fact, in one of my pieces, I, I quoted Yogendra. So, so Yogendra, you, please tell us, uh, uh, you've captured in your print article, uh, Two basic things. You are saying that that the Modi magic does not exist anymore, and you are you are saying this uh, after talking to people, and you are saying that you are quoting some people saying that that the expiry date for Modi magic is over, uh, just as there is an expiry date for everything. Uski uh, miyad Modi. Jadu ki miyad khatam ho gai hai. Now, I found, I found that very interesting. And this, the second thing you are arguing is that we are returning to normal politics in abnormal times. Uh, now, can you just explain to me the, the nuance that you are trying to bring out? Uh, this, is, this is very interesting here. Yeah. Please. Thanks, Venu. Thanks for taking note. Before I come to that, uh, can I begin with just two clarifications? One is, since you spoke about forecasting and election and outcome and getting it right, etc. Uh, let me clarify, you know, here we are not into an exercise of election forecasting. Uh, what I have said is based on a fairly limited set of observations, which I'll explain how. Uh, now, does that necessarily counter the opinion polls that are being touted, that are being presented, not necessarily. Uh, I found in my travel that uh, some of the observations that I made were quite in keeping with what I read in opinion polls, especially the Hindu CSDS uh, extensive opinion poll that has been carried out. Many of the observations there matched what I saw on the ground. Uh, yeah. But in some instances, I don't quite see a match between what the polls in general are saying and what I observed on the ground. And yeah. what I did was the following. Uh, 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 you know, we were five, six friends who were who went completely unscheduled, unstructured, making sure that we do not meet any politician or any journalist, just very ordinary people in their village, in their homes or uh, in the, you know, uh, in the small village markets, places where people gather and spoke to them differently would come back, every one of us would report what they heard, then we move to the next spot. And that's how we did it. Uh, is that a substitute for doing scientific opinion polls? No. But does it get a sense of the ground? I suppose it does. Over the years, I've seen that it does. Uh, yeah. But I just wanted to clarify that this, uh, you know, when I used to do opinion polls, 
Very many friends would say, but I didn't see this on the ground. So these are yeah. two different things. And I used to say then that these are not substitutes for each other. So I don't mean to say that what the opinion polls are saying is worthless, but this is a supplement to what they might be saying. Does Mr. Modi uh, extinguish all of the conversations? This is what we experienced in 2019. You know, you would go start speaking to people about Mangai, Berozgari or anything, and the only answer would be Modi. That finished the conversation. Or yes. Balakot, Pulwama, that finished all conversation. You could actually speak to people about anything else. Uh, in 2014, it was Modi. In 2019, it was Pulwama Balakot and Mr. Modi's uh, decisive leadership. Uh, this time it was different. Modi was popular, has been popular, but his name does not push everything else under the carpet. People okay. talk about other issues. People express unease, anger, disquiet. Candidates' own work matters. It did not matter in 2019. You could put a lamp post and he would win from the BJP. This time, yeah. candidates' own performance matters. Candidates' caste, community, and local social equations matter. Local issues matter. Yes. And this is, uh, this is, hap this is significant. It is likely to work against the BJP because all the local candidates, uh, at least in these areas that we visited, most of them are from the BJP because BJP swept this region. So if candidate work is evaluated, obviously the ruling party is answerable. Local issues, as and when economy related local issues come up, things get very, very difficult. Uh, when you, you must have observed that. But if you have any conversation about unemployment anywhere in this country, it is impossible for anyone to argue that this is not a problem. BJP may not acknowledge that it's in its manifesto. The prime minister may not mention this word in his long speeches and his long contrived interviews. But the fact is that everyone in the country is worried about it. You can convince people about whatever you want to say on Ladakh. You can convince people about India's growing international reputation because obviously people have no first-hand experience of any of these things. But unemployment is something about they have first-hand experience. Inflation is something they experience first-hand. These are issues which are surfacing and this disquiet is coming now, okay. which is related to the uh, second point that you had made. Uh, you know, drawn from the article that I said, mentioned, which is rise of normal politics. You know, mm. 2014 and 19 were very unusual elections. There was no, all normal politics considerations were just set, as, set aside. Uh, this is not happening anymore. And the return to normal politics uh, is a significant development. Uh, this could have turned the entire election around but then we don't live in normal times. This is a very abnormal election. We cannot forget while discussing all the swings, while discussing vote shares, while discussing popular moods and coalitions. We cannot overlook the big picture. The big picture is that in our country, uh, the normal democratic protocols are being given a go by, that yeah. uh, opposition leaders are being picked up, that uh, opposition party accounts have been frozen, that there are serious questions about EVM in election commission's uh, neutrality. So all this is gives a very abnormal context, which leads to yeah. a very strange situation. When you say normal politics has returned in abnormal times, of course, times are abnormal that we all know. But when you say normal politics has returned, you are also trying to say, uh, if I understand you correctly, uh, that that livelihood issues, real issues have come to the fore and uh, uh, Modi magic uh, is, is on the vein uh, as compared to say 2019 or uh, 2014. And also, uh, would I be right in saying that this is the least presidential kind of election in character? Uh, are, we, are, we, are, we, are we to understand from your formulation that that this is going to be a largely a, a state to state constitu constituency to constituency election. Uh, that would be reading too much uh, and probably drawing too much into what we are witnessing. Uh, but compared to 2014 and 19, uh, it seems that it would be a little less presidential 
because in 2014 and 19, as I said, Mr. Modi's name was enough to silence all conversations. Uh, that doesn't seem to be happening. And that's the point this young person made, which I've quoted in the article. He said, Bhai, ki ek hoti hai. and he said, Dekhye, Corona ki bhi ek thi. Apne aap ho gaya na. Is se yeah. ki jadu ki bhi ek thi. There's yeah. an expiry date. And uh, that seems to be coming, which is not to say Mr. Modi's popularity has expired. I didn't see that. Uh, but uh, but uh, a certain, you know, preeminence of, uh, as you rightly call it, presidential election, where everyone is talking about one person, personality, whether you like it, whether you dislike him, etc. And that is the core of the election. I, yeah. I felt that there was less of this compared to 2014 and 19. Uh, how, how much less? Uh, that would be captured by opinion polls, how much okay. less. And uh, uh, it is, I did not get a sense that any of the opposition leaders was coming close to Mr. Modi's popularity levels. That I did not feel. Uh, but yes, the kind of derision in which people spoke about Rahul Gandhi earlier, uh, there was less of that. There was criticism, but not that kind of papu kind of image which you used to hear yeah. earlier. Uh, that has changed. Uh, people spoke a lot about uh, their own local candidates. Uh, that mattered. So many of these things made a difference to the manner in which uh, we uh, saw uh, this. So, Yogindi, are you, so are you suggesting uh, that the, this this election is is less presidential than the the, the previous two, uh, say 2019 and 2014? And and number two, uh, how do you compare uh, purely in this regard? Uh, how would you compare this with, say, 2004? Uh, you know, a lot of people are trying to see some parallel between 2004 and now in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of, you know, the India shining. You know, there's a the mahal uh, that uh, that this is a one-way election, and and uh, and there's only one way that this election is going. Uh, so was the case in 2004, and uh, and Vajpayee ji was popular in 2004. Uh, uh, but of course, uh, we were not in abnormal, living in abnormal, abnormal times, as you said. So, so, how would you uh, do? You see any parallels in, in this regard? Uh, some parallels are very easy to notice, uh, Vedo. Uh, like in two thousand four, uh, there was an overall mahal climate that you know India shining, Mr. Vajpayee is coming back, Mr. Vajpayee was popular. All this was the case. Uh, however, yeah. uh, below the surface. There was uh, resentment, there were issues, there were disquiet, and uh, that disquiet expressed itself more powerfully than the dominant narrative of India Shine. Uh, something, there is an element of that. However, to draw a complete parallel would be a mistake. There is yeah. an element of that as well here because Mr. Modi is popular uh, and uh, there's a lot of hava about the BJP. However, if you look, at, if you speak to ordinary people, there is very serious disquiet, disquiet about unemployment that I mentioned. Uh, this yeah. belt where I travel is also a belt that uh, sends a lot of uh, young people to the Indian Army. Uh, I noticed and heard enormous disquiet about uh, Agnivir scheme, for example. Uh, yeah. Very unhappy about this. Uh, there is disquiet about inflation. No matter what the official inflation figures might be, ordinary people feel that they are unable to afford things that they want in life. Basics of life they cannot afford. There is disquiet uh, on growing inequalities. Uh, there is also disquiet for the first time, Benu, I heard, uh, disquiet on uh, the issue of Tana Shahi. This word I had not, I mean, I'd stopped hearing this word uh, in ordinary people's conversations for a very, very long time. Although people like you and me keep mentioning these things, mm -hmm. but this did not figure in the conversations on the ground. This time, after a long time, I heard people talk about Tanasha with reference to what the BJP is doing to the opposition. So yeah. all that does create something of a parallel, but where you do not see a parallel, Tanasha it is not a parallel with Mr. Bajpayee's government, but disquiet below a overall impression of uh, uh, one part, the ruling party coming back, etc. There is a parallel. Where you do not have parallel is, of course, the stranglehold of the ruling establishment over the media, over 
administration. And I'm sorry to say over the election process itself, uh, that was not the case in 2004. Uh, that, yeah. that abnormality did not exist. And also, I think the kind of meticulous micromanagement, uh, both in the good sense and in the bad sense, which is going on, did not exist in Mr. Vajpayee's time. Uh, yeah. So all this may mean that despite this uh, disquiet, things may not come out in open. But uh, mm. know, there are different levels. Uh, the first level is disquiet. Now, disquiet, even deep disquiet doesn't always mean that you go and vote against the ruling party. The disquiet must be expressed itself in aggregated forms. And yeah. then you must feel that, OK, someone else is better than this one in order to address my unease, my question, my disquiet. Uh, the first is definitely there. That I can tell you after visiting these places. And incidentally, much of what we are discussing is uh, reflected in the CSDS Lokniti survey that was carried in the Hindu. Exactly. On the issue of employment, yeah. on the issue of price rise, on the issue of, uh, grow, uh, of uh, falling credibility of the election commission, etc. Yeah. All these things were, and, and even on the EVM, uh, all these things were reflected in the in this survey as well. So there is disquiet. There cannot be any question. How that disquiet plays itself out in in the election, uh, whether it aggregates itself and whether it finds an alternative to which it attaches itself, are the questions to be seen in the yeah here the yeah election. here Yogin, I, I you make a very interesting point, and this is the nuance that I, I want to discuss a uh, little more in detail with you. In your article, you there is one sentence where, where you exactly articulate what you just said, uh, where you say that, that a lot of individuals that you spoke to were in distress. They were saying, Ghar ka kharcha nahi chal raha. And we all know that livelihood, livelihood issues have come to the fore, uh, you quoted the CSDS survey and this is a common refrain anywhere you go. I have spoken to many Uber drivers, they say that they are worse off than they were five years ago. Their incomes are stagnant and the costs have gone up tremendously. Whether it is food, whether it is gas, whether it is whatever you take, you know, uh, the you know, input for their, uh, you know, petrol, diesel for their cars, uh, which they are using for commercial purpose. And of course, the other people who are self-employed people also use gas uh, energy for their work. Now, you in one sentence, you say that individual choices uh, that you uh, that people expressed uh, to you, uh, even saying that they are going to vote against the BJP this time, although they voted for BJP in the previous two general elections, even after that, you said there seemed to be a disconnect between individual choice and the the collective the perception of collective preference so that's where you bring in this slogan aayega to modi hi so basically what you're saying is a lot of people that you spoke to they are in distress they are saying that they will vote against bjp but they are, they also have a certain sense of collective perception uh, or collective uh, perception which which suggests Ayega to Modi. Now, now, this can you explain this dichotomy to me? Uh, well, this is exactly what I mean by normal politics in abnormal times and the dissonance that it creates. Uh, the dissonance expresses itself in multiple ways. Uh, you ask someone, how are you? Very bad. Kaisa chal raha hai? Are saab gujara nahi hota. Parivar ka kya haal hai? Bahut kharaab hai. Desh ka kya haal hai? Desh aage bad raha hai. मतलब मेरी हालत खराब है मेरे पड़ोसी की हालत खराब है मेरे दोस्त की हालत खराब है लेकिन देश आगे बढ़ रहा है क्यों क्योंकि अखबार में मैं सुन रहा हूं क्योंकि टीवी में मैं देख रहा हूं देश आगे बढ़ रहा है सेकंड इज आर यू गोइंग टू वोट फॉर बीजेपी नो आई वोट आर योर फ्रेंड्स योर फैमिली गोइंग टू वोट फॉर बीजेपी नो व्हाट्स द ट्रेंड इन योर विलेज वेल बीजेपी वुड लूज एट लीस्ट 300 400 वोट्स इन आवर विलेज सो व्हाट्स गोइंग टू हैपन नहीं सब आएगा तो मोदी सो दिस इज दिस इज द डिसोनेंस uh, between individual feelings, preferences, likes, and voting preferences, and a perception that collective mein kuch aur ho hai. Desh is something disconnected from me. I'm going in one direction, Desh is going in another direction. Aayega to Modi. Uh, you also see it in a couple of other things that uh, 
things that are happening on the ground do not make it to the top. That's something you and I know. And that's why, you know, media houses like Wire exist, because in the mainstream media, things that are happening on the ground do not manage to get to the television headlines, do not make media front pages. So uh, news does not travel from bottom to the top. And interestingly, in a strange sense, things also do not travel from the top to the bottom. Electoral bond, which is a major scandal, I think one of the biggest scandals that we have had in independent India, political scandals, especially those which have some evidence to it. Now, that does not percolate down. Media does not uh, get information from below. Media does not reach information below. So people are discussing all kinds of things other than electoral bonds, which would have made a difference. This is what I mean by dissonance. And this is actually, uh, so, so this is the sharp contrast from 2004. Uh, in 2004, uh, you, media was not playing this kind of a role, although media was quite partisan to Mr. <coughs> media was quite favorably inclined. However, yeah. things would not be blocked. This yeah. is what we are witnessing here. And this is the dissonance which is causing a strange situation in our country today. But 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 Yogendra, in 2004, I recall, there was there was a one-way perception, you know, that that what that BJP was coming back. And the bulk of opinion polls suggested that bulk of media <coughs> sorry was also anticipating it. Uh, uh, if you recall, I, I I I mean you you at that time, of course, you were uh, you were part of the uh, the CSDS uh, Lokniti. You you were running the the Cephology, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, segment there. Uh, do you recall uh, uh, any alternate uh, any uh, other voices, uh, contrary vo voices at that time in the media? Uh, not so much in opinion polls. In fact, uh, when you would recall, I had written a piece at that point, uh, I think a couple of months before the election to say, yeah. forget opinion polls, this election is still open. This is an open race. And for which I got a lot of flack initially, uh, because okay. uh, that was not the perception clearly. Uh, yeah. That is that was not the dominant perception, even till the exit polls, that was not the perception. Even in exit polls, people said mostly, that uh, NDA was coming back to power. Uh, so yes, there was a systematic uh, misreading of the situation. However, yeah. the kind of situations we are looking at today uh, in terms of, uh, say, something like electoral bonds. Mm -hmm. now, how is it that such a big national scandal does not reach villages, does not reach people who watch news on a regular basis? It is because television channels have completely started blocking out any information which is inconvenient to the current regime. That did not happen in the times of Mr. Vajpayee. Okay. So, 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 you again, again, coming back to the earlier point about, uh, I mean, your your observation that individual individuals are saying that they are distressed, they they and their families, etc. Uh, unemployment ki problem hai, and they want to vote against the BJP uh, and at the same time uh, they they have a sense of the, the collective perception which is that Aayega to Modi hi. Now, uh, doesn't this run contrary to the general uh, received wisdom that, that when there is a mahal that one party is, uh, uh, it's a one way kind of uh, uh, election, only one party is going to uh, uh, take all the uh, winnings, uh, uh, then pe people, voters tend to go with that perception. But here, the interesting contradiction is the people that you spoke to, your 400, uh, you know, uh, the sample, whatever uh, pe people, they, they, they themselves are saying that, that they are voting against the BJP, but they are saying there is a collective perception that, that, that Aayega to Modi. So, is this a, is this something different uh, from from normal behavior uh, that we see or that we yeah, believe different in that huh? different in two ways uh, huh. when, uh, one is i mean normally you know what you see is people say bhai main bjp ke liye vote karunga bjp jeete ya main congress ke liye vote karunga kaun jeetega of course congress jeete that's the usual thing but here you see a very interesting dissonance those who are those who are voting for bjp are of course saying bjp will win but those who are not voting for bjp also say national you know they might say hamari constituency mein congress jeete 
but nationally they are not saying so which is to say bjp's psychological propaganda game has actually put everyone on defensive and okay. uh, that is what the opposition needs to break you know you need okay. to tell people look if you are not voting bjp if he is not voting bjp if he is not voting bjp then maybe the country is not voting for them you know yeah. you need to give voter that assurance that they are part of a larger trend which they okay. don't have as yet and unless that happens you do not have election waves that happen and uh, uh, number 2 so someone yeah. has to also uh, give them this sense that look for example for the unemployed most of the unemployed youth think that they are unemployed because of their own mistakes because of their misfortune because of their own inabilities because of things that they failed to do someone needs to come and tell them that look all of you cannot be misfort uh, unfortunate one person can be unfortunate not everyone that what we are dealing with a systemic issue that you are victim of something which is larger which is happening to all of you that is where politics comes in and as someone keeps uh, had told me once issue hote nahi hai issue banaye jaate hain there is a lot of disquiet on the ground there are lots of issues on the ground but they become political issue when the opposition or someone comes turns these into issues someone tells this person this is not your individual problem this is systems problem this is not your individual preference everyone thinks the way you think that is when you create waves that is still waiting to happen. so you are you are essentially yogin you are saying that the the opposition is yet to foreground all these uh, issues which the people on the ground are are desperately talking about is that what you are saying uh, yes so in a sense uh, as someone said told me on the ground bhai janta to taiyar baithi hai ye neta aur partiyan taiyar hain ke nahi ye pata nahi janta to taiyar baithi hai mane in the sense that people have grievances people have disquiet there is a felt unease and i can tell you venu if the bjp was in opposition and congress was ruling at this level of disquiet and unease bjp would have overthrown congress government because they that know I, I how to convert is. these issues yeah exactly. i mean yeah. you know that yeah, uh, yeah. so they know how to convert half unease into an issue they also know how to convert an unease which they suspect may have existed 500 years ago <laughs> into an issue today and the trouble is that the opposition cannot sometimes is insufficiently geared to convert an issue which exists right now which exists in the face they can't yeah. convert that into an election issue that is where the problem lies the problem is not at the level of popular perception the problem is at the level of political translation so you so you again i another question i want to ask you it's interesting you're saying that that tana shahi has gone down and people are talking about it and it's gone down to the to the level of to the grassroots uh, the manner in which chief ministers have been sitting chief ministers have been arrested in the last <coughs> couple of months uh, so so if tana shahi has actually gone down uh, to the people then do you rule out the possibility that it 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 may turn out that 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 pe- people will fight this election it will be it will be it will be the it will be modi versus or the bjp versus the people uh, as it happened uh, during indira gandhi's time when you know when she became when she imposed emergency and then she after the election happened essentially the opposition was hardly organized that time it was it was an election uh, fought by the people essentially isn't it so do you think something of the that sort is possible uh, in the in the current uh, Uh, situation uh that would be my hope you know and that should be the hope of any democrat in this country uh but i think i would be careful in trying to uh pin too much on that hope at this stage because when i say tana shah is being talked about it is not your uh, daily wage worker who barely comes back home and doesn't get to know about news uh he or she is not talking about tana shah but okay. the someone more educated not educated someone more politically aware person in the village 
you know, who engages in these political conversations in the village, who takes sides, who has some information, they are beginning to talk about it. I saw that, I heard that mostly, uh, you know, these uh, among Jats as a community. Uh, I heard that uh, with people who would have some education, people who would be village teachers, people, you know, har gaon mein ek adda hota hai, chahe taash ka adda hota yeah, hai, yeah. ya wo chahe ka adda hota hai, gaon mein adda. उस अड्डे में हिस्सा लेने वालों ने अब ये बात शुरू कर दी अरे भाई ऐसे ही पकड़ लिया कमाल है पहले सोरेन को पकड़ लिया अब इसको पकड़ लिया और देखो अपने लोगों को तो नहीं पकड़ रहे दैट परसेप्शन हैज गॉन डाउन व्हाइल पीपल डोंट नो अबाउट इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड्स दे नो अबाउट अरविंद केजरीवाल का अरेस्ट दे नो अबाउट व्हाट्स बीइंग डन टू अपोजिशन सो एट दैट लेवल इट हैज हैज इट परकुलेटेड डाउन टू एवरीवन एज आई विटनेस्ड एज अ चाइल्ड इन 1977 वेयर इट डिड परकुलेट डाउन टू द लास्ट पर्सन you know at least in the world that i lived in in the heartland of the nine, mid 1970s uh, there it percolated down has it percolated down as yet i don't know i don't think it has percolated down to the extent to which i would like it to so finally you can i want to ask you <coughs> uh, all your experience on the on the on the ground that you have seen in the in the last many uh, weeks uh you will be travelling 1500 kilometers now you will be going into eastern up bihar etc so we'll, we'll 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 be in touch with you uh, uh as you travel and would want your feedback uh you also argue uh from your experience so far that that the bjp ha bjp's performance uh 2019 performance uh, cannot be exceeded if anything there will be a fall from that so uh so so therefore you are kind of ruling out this uh, this hawa that bjp has created of 370 plus for it for, for itself and uh, 400 plus with allies uh, so 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 what do you uh, what's your sense uh, which are the states where the bjp is likely to decline and uh, and how how would the declines in different states how how would they aggregate what's your sense i mean broad sense i'm not sort of yeah, uh, of course uh, you, you, you can only speculate talking, at this moment yeah we're not talking election forecasting it's just yeah. a broad sense that one is talking uh and uh, you know whether bjp can do whether bjp can get 370 on its own or not can be answered with just a piece of paper and pencil you don't need to go to the field just yeah. look at the bjp seats how many seats they are contesting where they are placed and you get an answer I mean, that's an impossibility of course uh, but the more serious question is uh, how does it go beyond what it scored in 2019 or can it go below the 272 mark these are the realistic ranges that we are looking at yeah and my only uh, uh, observation so far is that when i look at what opinion polls tell most of these opinion polls that are saying bjp gets more than 300 bjp would improve upon 2019 they assume that bjp would sweep the entire north indian belt which is to say hindi belt plus gujarat yeah. bjp would sweep the way it did last time or in 2014 yeah in the travels that i have done in these areas i don't see that uh, you're not seeing that you in yeah. western up the areas that i travel which is from meerut to saharanpur in those areas yes uh, bjp seems to be ahead but if someone says are they scoring the kind of victory they scored in 2019 i did not see that if anything i saw a marginal decline in haryana i definitely see a challenge to the bjp in so many areas in haryana ever since the farmers movement days there is a very serious challenge to the bjp and if someone tells me they are going to sweep mm. i wouldn't know how and in eastern rajasthan now mind you eastern rajasthan is an area where the opposition is expected to do a little better than the rest uh, but if bjp is going to get is going to sweep rajasthan they obviously would need to sweep this area from shri ganganagar churu jhunjhunu seekar दौसार जयपुर रूरल अलवर भरतपुर एंड सवाई माधोपुर आई चैलेंज आई मीन आस्क एनी वन टू ट्रेवल टेक फॉर बीजेपी वर्कर्स विद यू एंड एंड स्टॉप इन एनी विलेज स्पीक टू ऑर्डनरी पीपल डू यू सी ए स्वीट 
No, if anything in these areas, an ordinary travel would suggest you that it is the Congress which has an upper hand in these areas. Now, okay. uh, does this observation of mine outrule all the opinion polls? No, I have done opinion polls. I respect opinion polls, but I just want to register. Uh, I mean, I, 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 because I've done opinion polls and I respect them, I also happen to know their limitations and therefore I would just register my uh, different observation. In the, case, in the case of East Rajasthan, anyone who tells me that Congress, that, that uh, BJP is sweeping this region, I can only say maybe we went to two different countries. Uh, okay. This much I would have to say. And in Karnataka, when I speak to my friends who are on the ground, who are conducting surveys, who are doing face-to-face -face surveys, they confirm that uh, Congress is very much uh, uh, in, the, in the running. So here are the states where I do expect uh, BJP sweep not to be repeated. Rajasthan would be one. Haryana is another state. Uh, Karnataka is a third state. Maharashtra, if you look at NDA, BJP's tally may stay because BJP is contesting far many more seats than they contested last time. Yes. Uh, but NDA as a whole is bound to go down in Maharashtra and their tally is bound to go down in Bihar. Now, someone needs to tell me how BJP would be able to retain what it did in 2014 or 19 in these states or how what where BJP would make up for for the losses that it suffers in these states? That's a question that still remains insufficiently answered. People just assume ki yaha to sweep karegi kare. Yeah. I'm saying because there is a return to normal politics, that kind of sweep, at least I don't see that. I could be mistaken, but I don't see that. And I must honestly put it on record that I don't see that happening here. Uh, and we need better evidence. We need to travel. And therefore, I would invite all of, the, uh, of your viewers, everyone, uh, let us not judge what's happening in this country only by what we see on television, only by what we read in the newspaper headlines. Let us make the effort of stepping out. Speaking to Ola driver is one way. Speaking to someone who comes to work at your home is another way. We could also take a third way, namely, uh, spending a few hours just going out and speaking to very ordinary people. And I can tell you, ordinary people in this love country love to talk. They tell you what is on their mind. Let's yeah. listen to them. Before we form an image of what's happening in India, let us speak to Indians. So basically, Yogen, <clears throat> what you're saying is, from all your travels so far, uh, and after talking to ordinary people, uh, and after, of course, as you said, speaking to people in Karnataka, uh, your sense is that, that BJP will definitely drop a uh, number of seats uh, in places like Eastern Rajasthan, Haryana, Karnataka, Maharashtra, uh, perhaps Bihar. So, if that were true, then, then the logical conclusion is that BJP may be even lower than uh, what uh, what it was in 2014 uh, in terms of its uh, seats tally. Uh, if 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 one uh, if if one takes your your argument to to a more logical end, you know, isn't it? Uh, in order to convert what I'm saying into precise number of seats, you would need a lot of arithmetic. You need a lot of precision of data, which I don't have. So I would limit myself to. Uh, and then the fact is I'm a political worker, so I'm not, no longer that neutral analyst or psychologist that I used to be. And there are many in this country. So I would just urge them to please provide us with better information uh, and rely. And one point I did want to make of it, most of these big opinion polls that are being presented on television, now this point does not apply to CSDS because they actually go to villages and speak to people face to face. But most of the opinion polls that are being presented to us in the last two or three days are simply based on telephone calling. Now you yeah. tell me, how many telephones do you receive when someone calls you, I'm calling from this agency, don't you just say thank you very much, you just put the phone down. Who is yeah. it who has the time to answer these phone calls? What kind of people have phones and is there not still a significant small chunk uh, at the bottom of this pyramid 
who still do not have telephone, how their opinions are being counted. So let us not. So all I'm saying is that on the basis of what we see on the ground, what we hear as political activists, as uh, people who, uh, you know, people like you who are in the media, this does not seem to confirm the picture of an a uh, third wave that's going to sweep this country. Okay. No, I'm afraid it does not confirm that. How it might translate into exact number of seats is something we need to wait and see. Uh, but yeah. this is a moment, just as people of India are, uh, are registering a disquiet with this regime, it is time for some of us to register a disquiet with this uh, impression, this mahal of a sweep uh, for the BJP. Yeah, I got your point again. So basically, you're saying that you, you are, your sense is that that they they will lose votes, but how how they convert to seats and all, of course, will only be known uh, through a more uh, empirical kind of, of study. But you, you're merely uh, giving us a sense of what people on the ground are saying and what, what they are what they're feeling. So uh, so so let's. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good good point to sort of uh, to. Uh, good, good place to start at least go out and uh, get more and more feedback from the people as you said ordinary people and then and then wait and see uh, how the whole election uh, uh, how the actual voting uh, happens uh, in the course of the next uh, month and a half uh, thank you again for talking to us and uh, and uh, uh, please uh, uh, keep in touch with us uh, we'll be ki keeping we'll be keeping in touch with you uh, during uh, your travels to other parts of the uh, of the country uh, we would particularly be uh, interested in uh, in in your uh, observations or in your in your uh, interactions uh, uh, with people in Bihar and and what you gather from there. We'll be in touch with you. Thank you, Yogin, for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.